Hello everybody and welcome back to Let's Play uh, Xenonauts. Uh, realistically, I should be recording something else, uh, especially because I screwed up and recorded the wrong series uh, last week, but I've, I'm a little more in the mood to play this, especially because the last recording session was actually pretty good. Uh, so yeah, we're recording a, another part or two of this. Let's go in again. My timer started. So uh, I did go ahead and check out the wiki just to, you know, double check some stuff so the nanotech workshop or whatever it's called the upgraded workshop and the quantum laboratory uh improve things by 50 percent so again we're really trying to find an alien base your first alien base gives you that tech or uh gives you that sort of free upgrade so we really need to find an alien base so that we can uh, get that stuff I think realistically there's like you need to assault an alien base twice in total i think to get the the good shit uh the first one gives you that upgrade then the second one uh gives you access to a tech that allows you to get the i think it's called the quantum cryptography uh center or whatever something like that um and that gives us a thing that allows us to see what a ufo is doing um and what the like crew complement is and yada 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 But so far, we have not been lucky with finding an alien base. And the two obvious locations are like Greenland up here. Or, you know, way out here in Siberia. Um, they could possibly be in like this central Russia area, but I, I don't think so. Yeah. Uh, I'm not inclined to believe they're there, at the very least. It's possible they are. Because we have seen them sort of hang out around this kind of area. Okay. Uh, go ahead and send out the Foxtrot and Condor for you. Another medium UFO, another medium UFO there. Keep going. Yep, shoot that down. You guys just, I'm going to tell you to return to base now instead of waiting the little bit extra for the game to decide that, oh wait, we're out of fuel. You have two more hours. There we go. Ah, you know what? No, go for the medium. It's worth so much more to shoot down a medium than it is to shoot down a, a small craft. Condor 1 and 2 are rearmed, but they don't have fuel and how long until they get fuel four hours five and six have been rearmed they have two hours until they get their fuel you have one more hour for you go Go ahead and send you for that. Shoot that down, and I think we're going to go for that one. Yeah, I think we're going to go for that one. I need the, uh, the extra... I need the extra uh, materials that it'll provide. Especially if I'm going to be, you know... Upgrading our uh, upgrading our interceptors with the uh, the fancy, not super new, but still new-ish Corsairs. Uh, but let's double check, make sure the sh uh, strike uh, eh, the strike is uh, fully 
kit it out. Also, make sure everybody who can carry a stun baton has a stun baton. That way, you know, capturing an alien is a, a little bit easier than it was that... Uh, I think that was last part. Now, the Shrike is much faster than the Charlie. Well, I say much fa- oh, yeah, it's much faster. It's literally, like, twice as fast. So we can wait a little bit longer until we make sure that day has actually passed over, basically, Berlin. Because that seems to be where this one crash-landed. God, that small is much faster than our condors are. Which is interesting, because our condors shouldn't have any problem catching up to a small alien craft, because there's there's only the one. Um, I'm pretty I'm pretty sure there's literally only one type of small alien craft, and yet our condors down there from Indochina are failing miserably to actually catch it. Okay, and this loading screen is taking its sweet, sweet time. Oh, that's interesting. A shot will inflict between half damage to basically 50% more than its base damage. Come on. Oh, for some reason I could have sworn this game you could move the map with a uh, middle mouse button. I don't know why I thought that, but apparently you can't. I just tried that now. Technically, you're safe from every direction except for straight to your left. Which, you know, that's fine. I'm going to have you watch that way. Now this is a landing ship, so this is going to be a decent sized map with a decent number of enemies. Lucia, you push up there. Billy Bob. Uh, you're not going to push up all the way to there because you wouldn't be able to actually shoot. And it's a little important to me that you're capable of shooting. At least some sort of reaction fire. So I want you to watch the road. I am going to assume there's nobody in this corner. And I actually just... Oh, I... Uh, never mind. Irina was never going to be able to shoot anyway. Now, I have zero reason to care about necessarily capturing any aliens here. So, this is basically a smash and grab in a sense. We're going in with the express purpose of just killing all the aliens we can. You're 36. Let me move you here, get you to look inside just a little bit. Okay, this looks to be clear. That civvy is there, so I assume there's nobody in here. Otherwise, he probably would have been dead. 
And also, you know, we didn't hear anybody shoot, so it's not like he got shot at. Uh, realistically, I probably should have just kept you on that corner now that I think about it, but too late to do anything about it. Uh, Billy Bob, you push up. You will not be able to shoot. But if you can... Okay, this is... This goes nowhere from the looks of it. There's going to be an opening here, presumably. At least that's what it looks like. But, yeah, this... This is just a field that goes literally nowhere. But that's fine. We're going to have Sophie and Antonia probably take the street. Lucia and Billy Bob will push up check this corner, and then move through the gap here. And of course, the vehicle will be pushing up along the street as well, obviously. Lucia took a shot, missed, but we know there's somebody over there. So, don't push up too far. Is the obvious thing to do. In fact... I think Lucy is going to stay where she is. And Billy Bob's going to push up to this hose, I guess. I'm really not sure what it is. Just to check that corner. And he should be safe here unless the alien comes all the way around the corner. And for whatever reason, Lucia doesn't shoot and or kill. Which, you know, is a possibility, but I wouldn't describe it as likely. Okay, now you just make sure that there is no alien hiding behind here, because there always could be, and there isn't. Okay, that civvy ran in here, so this is presumably clear. Yes, it is. That's another civvy. Okay, this looks to be clear. I'm going to tell you to back out. Uh, bring Natalie down to assist. So she's going to use up all of her time units getting into position. Lucia, you keep watch. You missed. And so you got a hit. Second hit. And he's dead. And this is why we like Lucia. She is the best soldier that we will have. And it's why it's important that she never dies. Because if she dies, that will set us back significantly. Yeah, I'm like 90% certain there's nothing here at all. Because otherwise, a lot of these civvy... Uh, civilians would have already been killed. So, yeah, I'm pretty sure this is clear. Uh, that does not get us full visibility up the road. But I... Want to assume that there's not another one, so Billy Bob is going to push up just a little to get a little more visibility. There doesn't look like there's another way into this field here where the UFO is. From up here. So we're going to keep the vehicle watching here. Uh, no, I was thinking of maybe having it pull back just a little bit. No, we'll keep it where it is, and the rest of the team is going to stay as they are. Lucille will push up just a little. I'm sure there's another alien outside somewhere. I mean, it's possible he ran back to the UFO, but I want to assume that there's at least one more alien somewhere outside. 
Okay, just crouch. Because that does provide some protection against getting shot at. I know, what a surprise that crouching provides protection. Okay, Billy Bob, I want you to push up to this corner. And technically, you now give us eyes on the UFO. We see he's going to push up. I assume there's nobody right here at the end of the road, but we'll check that next turn. Um, let's have the vehicle push up just a little. Oh, Jesus, game stuttered there. Okay, so we have a local force there who is currently alive. We're going to have Antonia push up just a tad. Uh, Sophie, you're actually not going to push across the street because you're not going to have the time units to do anything in that scenario. It's possible, I, I think I said it already, maybe I didn't, and I just meant to. Uh, it's possible that there was another alien outside, which I'm sure there was. He may have pulled back into the UFO. Because it's a little too quiet, honestly. So I'm a little inclined to believe that that might have been what happened. I mean, pretty early on, we did hear the sound of a door opening. One of the alien doors. So he might have pulled back. Technically, she is safe in this position from being shot over here. Okay, Billy Bob, you're going to check the corner. And the corner is clear, okay. Go ahead and start pushing up. The C will push alongside you. She's going to take a bit of a lead. Largely because she has the extra time units to do so. Damn it, you uh, kind of sort of ran out of time units to actually be able to check this. There we go. Um, Run behind the tractor. That way you have some protection. I just need to check over here. Now, it looks like this UFO got really fucked up. So it's gonna... I went a little too far, actually, there. All this fire here is gonna kind of lag us out a little bit. And annoyingly, it actually does spread. Uh, from what I understand, so... There we go found another one. Uh, pull back. There's one in that house right there. You push to the other side of the street. Billy Bob is going to push up to here. And Lucia will stay back just a little. Just in case somebody comes flying around here with a grenade and, you know, Wall hacks their way to knowing we're right there. I really hope that guy's not stupid enough to try and run inside. Okay, he's still right there. Which is... weird. He seemingly didn't move at all. Which I don't know why he wouldn't.
Like, he's not stuck or anything. There's literally no reason for him to have just not moved at all. But seemingly that's what he decided to do. Okay, there we go. Now he moved and found another eight. One of them. Take care of him. He's still inside the house there. Or the little barn, shed, whatever it is. And there's the other door. Now, theoretically, I could have somebody blow up this propane tank out there. Or whatever it is. And that should more or less take out this entire side of the building, or at least most of it. But none of the people on this side actually have the ability to really kill him, so... Yeah, we're not going to do that. We're sort of gonna hope he just kind of... ...runs into a bad spot and gets reaction fired. Oh, and there's another big opening there. And I think there might be another one right here at the end of the map. Technically, she can see there, but she can't actually shoot if he does come around the corner. Even if she had time units. Okay. Do find it just a tad bit weird that he's not, uh... He's not moving out of that position now. Which just seems weird to me. We're gonna use this thing to just blow up the building then. He used up all his time units. Moving there. And that just means I can shoot him now. Brilliant plan. Absolutely brilliant plan. Okay. Is the fire still there? No, it looks like it's burned out finally. So, okay. This is presumably clear. We only saw the one dude who had the heavy plasma um, thing, the their shotgun, basically. Can you move at all? No. Not if I want you to be able to shoot. So, okay, let's go ahead and have these guys. God damn, that is such a clusterfuck. I mean, it's a ton of smoke, so it does actually hurt the ability to shoot. So theoretically, if there's an alien somewhere out here that we haven't seen, they're going to have a bit of a hard time shooting our guys, because it does provide some technically cover. Billy Bob can't quite make it to where I want him to get to. And it seems neither can Lucia, sadly. Did 
Damn, this thing kind of struggles to get around to where I need it to. You know, Natalie, just, you know, double check. But I, you know, it should be clear. But I have zero reason to believe that there's another alien in here who just has not moved out of this spot. Yeah. Thought as much. There's the big doors. Uh, sadly, I don't think there's cover outside that I'll be able to make use of. I might be wrong about that, but I don't think I am. See, you're not going to be the one making that push. Because I don't technically know if this is clear. I mean, it should be, but... Well, maybe not should be, but it presumably is. You know, there's... Damn, whatever the hell was in there is just all gone. Yeah, I mean, there's no reason to believe... that there's any aliens right here. Any that are here are presumably... or any that are left are presumably inside. Especially because we're so close to the UFO. guys is uh team groups are gonna be all kinds of screwed up now but you know what it really doesn't matter too much once you get inside natalie can't quite make it so we're gonna have irena stack up behind antonia uh, billy bob you're going to take cover back here for now okay you can't quite see inside okay there are two inside on the lower levels We're going to leave the door open in hopes that it makes them want to, you know, come out and play. If nothing else, at least we'll maybe get some reaction fires inside. This is annoyingly not considered a corner you can shoot around, apparently. I don't know why it's not, but it apparently isn't. You 
I don't know why you claim that you... You can shoot that. I don't know why you're acting as if you can't. And we're just going to do this for a little bit. See what kind of shots we get. And that looks like it might be it. Luckily, this one is not as screwed up as the other one. I can actually, you know, see inside for one thing. But two, there's actually this little bit of cover here, which I do actually use. Because it protects you from up top, at least for the most part. And provides a decent view of the rest of the room with a bit of an exception to the left side here. But it's still, you know, very useful. Oh, uh, okay. Oh, shit. There's a... That is one of their guards or whatever they're called up top there. Let's uh, see if we can get anybody else spotted. No. And he is not going to move from that position, more than likely. Damn, there are two of them up top. Uh, you don't have a chance of throwing a grenade. Uh, you have the time units, you just don't have the arc. Now, luckily, smoke does float. So, if I can land this in just the right spot... Nope, that was not the right spot in the slightest. We're going to close that. Okay, one of them backed off. Oh, shit. He's still there, but I don't think he can actually shoot us from his position. We can see him. But once we're inside, he can't actually hit us. At least, not from any spot that I would normally hang out at. And close that so that uh, Sophie doesn't potentially get shot in the back. Really? You're going to use a grenade at close range like that. They fucking hate Antonia, or whoever that one was. Yeah, Antonia, they, they hate her. They, they really, really hate her. Goddamn, people, your, your ability to toss these grenades is garbage. What does it cost? It costs you 40, so you can't move it off. I want you to be able to throw your grenade. How much does it cost you? 50. Okay, you can throw a grenade from here. And, uh, you have a good chance of landing it where I want you to. Which will hopefully make him decide, I don't want to be here, and he'll run out. Okay, let's start moving the rest of the team up into position to actually, you know, get inside.
And yes, you can shoot from down below. And they they really hate Antonia. God damn. She's probably dead dead. I'm just going to go ahead and get that out of the way now. She is probably dead dead. That's one down. I mean, I can hope that she's not dead. I would love to be proved wrong. Okay, I think from here you might be able to shoot him. And you actually need to reload. Also, I'm a little surprised they were using grenades that much, considering I wasn't bunched up in a way that would actually make grenades particularly effective. Like, the AI loves using grenades when, you know, there's a... When you're grouped up. But if you're not grouped up, normally the AI doesn't use them too much. But this time the AI was like, no, I'm using grenades. I got them. Might as well. Uh, Sophie's going to be the one to push in because she has time units to engage anybody. If that guy comes through this door, he's dead. Like I said, if he went through that door, he was dead. Now, I I think there's still a dude in here. The room that I have to get to for the transporters to go up top. The room that is on fire and has... I think that's the reactor. Let's wait one turn before we push, okay? No, it looks like uh, the dude that Sophie killed was the one that we had spotted and attempted to fire on, but kind of, sort of, missed. Uh, we'll keep Lucia there. Uh, God, you are such crap now. We're going to keep now, I think, down in the lower level. She she can't really contribute. I'm just going to be honest. She's incapable of contributing to the team right now. I mean, luckily you gain skills from just being sent out on missions. So even if you don't do anything, you help. Or you will, you know, gain experience. But God, she does not contribute to anything meaningful right now. Last dude or dudes is probably inside. Oh, I say probably. They are inside there. Question is just how many of them are there? Because there could be just the one. Or there could be a few. We have some degree of reaction fire, not too much. Uh, oh, Billy Bob, I forgot I sent you on this side. Well, that's fine. Natalie moved to the other side of the door. Sophie. You move there. Irina. I much prefer having a shield person, but sadly Antonia got knocked out, so she's not able to do this. 
I'd much rather have somebody else do it if given the opportunity, so we're actually gonna have Billy Bob do it. I really don't want an experienced person on a door. Okay. Pretty good chance of the grenade landing where I want it to. And he's not really near anything of importance. And sadly, Antonia was not able to be saved, so she is dead dead. Which is a shame. Because she was good. She was a lieutenant. It is a pretty decent rank to make it to. Uh, Sophie managed to get the Order of Terra for eliminating 20 extraterrestrial units in combat. Damn. And she got promoted to Major. The Sergeant... Uh, or excuse me, Lucy Martinez gets promoted to Lieutenant. Billy Bob also got promoted to Lieutenant and now got promoted to Sergeant. And there we go. She has plus one more strength and plus two more TUs. I don't know if Lucy is really gaining much in terms of useful stats at this point. We'll check that when we get back home. Uh, but let's go ahead and hire a new person. Uh, Jessica... Yeah. Yeah, whatever that last name is. I'm assuming he's probably going to be from Scandinavia. God damn, you guys finally caught that, but uh, I'm not going to send you guys out on that one right this second, so we're just going to airstrike that. Yeah, Lucy, are you actually really gaining anything useful? Yeah, I mean, your time units are maxed out, and I think the game said you gained a plus one TU, but you can't gain any more TUs because 100 is the max. So if you are gaining any more, I can only assume that they're taking up... No? They're not adding to sort of make up for the uh, penalty for being overweight. Or, you know, from suffering from the weight penalty, I'm pretty sure. So, yeah, you're you're not really gaining anything useful. Although, I do like that you are gaining strength. And, God, look at that accuracy. 89. You can actually hit the broad side of a barn. From outside the barn. Okay, this guy's coming back into our airspace. Let's go ahead and send the... Nope, and he left. That's fine. Also, how close are we to getting... Okay, that's only good right now. Yeah, I don't know how good the uh, Corsairs are with just the laser uh, Gatling gun. I'm really not sure exactly how great that is. Uh, but Condor 1... You've served us well with 43 missions, well, flights, and uh, 13 kills to your name. And for some reason, Condor 2 has been given all the kills. So, yeah. Uh, that's just the way the auto-resolve decided to work, because it gave all the kills, basically, to Condor 2. And Condor 1 was just kind of there to observe. But you're getting decommissioned. Now we have a fancy-schmancy new Corsair. And I need another one to replace the other Condor. So let's get to work on that. Ah. So, uh, we got an autopsy for a species that we have not actually fought, but I'm going to assume that one of them was a dead body on one of the uh, ships. Well, I say one of the ships. Probably on that landing ship that we just did. So, a Herodon stands roughly 170 centimeters, 5 feet 7 inches tall. They are mysterious foes, head and chest encased within an armored shell, and the rest of their body covered by a jumpsuit. Uh, they are delicate and slender in stature, with unusually long limbs. Armed with long-range weapons and a jetpack integrated into their armor, they almost certainly serve as the alien marksmen. The armor of this creature formed as much of the autopsy as the body itself. As we found, uh, which to, or as we found much to suggest it was not designed to be removed. There is evidence of an advanced rebreather system in the helmet that, coupled with the jumpsuit, would allow the creator to operate in any environment 
up to a hard vacuum. A blood filtration unit in the chest actually forms part of the Herodin circulatory system, pumping the blood around the body whilst filtering out etc. and other waste products. Or excuse me, excreta and other waste products. The helmet includes powerful cameras capable of viewing almost the entire electromagnetic spectrum. Uh, almost the entire electromagnetic spectrum, giving the alien long sight ranges and excellent situational awareness. The jump pack integrated into the rear of the armor is effectively a miniaturized version of the same thrusters used on UFOs. The control system is a neural network, i.e. plugged directly into the creature's brain. This almost certainly allows them to operate their thrusters and probably receive sensor information subconsciously. I believe these creatures are actually the alien engineer cast. They are completely unaffected by a vacuum and can maneuver around in space using their thrusters, allowing them to work on the exterior of a space-borne UFO just as easily as the interior. The alien beneath the armor bears some resemblance to a caisson, possessing the same pallid gray skin, oversized black eyes, and frail bone structure. A common ancestor is likely, but they have diverged significantly since. A clearest in the lengthened forearms, drooping ears, and bony spurs on either side of the creature's mouth. Uh, however, the largest difference is cerebral. The caisson has an oversized brain with enhanced cognitive development structures, i.e. social hierarchies, memory recall, and complex thought. The Herodin instead has enhanced structures in more basic areas, motor control, spatial awareness, visual analysis. It is an idiot savant, specialized into flight control and tool usage, Unfortunately for us, a sniper rifle is ultimately just another type of tool. Also, this means I was remembering incorrectly as to which species it is that does the whole teleporting crap. That is not the Herod, and for some reason I thought it was. But no, it is a different species. We will run into them, of course, because they are in the game. And they are going to be annoying. But uh, I, I think we'll live. I think we'll live. Also, we're probably cutting a little bit close on the money for building another uh, Corsair Interceptor. I just want to note that. We're going to be cutting it a little close. Uh, but that was my timer that went off while we were reading that, so I'm going to go ahead and end this part here. And I will see you all in the next part. And hopefully, soonish, we will find an alien base. Because we need it. It is vital to help us, uh, you know, progress our tech and build stuff in a more timely manner. That we find an alien base, particularly a small one, preferably. That way it's much faster to get done. And we don't need a base of a particular size for any of our current requirements. So literally the smallest base will do, but we need to find it first. Uh, it's also worth quite a bit of money and uh, uh, monthly contribution uh, change uh, if you take down an alien base. Similar, obviously, with like you know terror sites, but uh, yeah, we we need that that alien base. And again, the. The only two areas that I think that they exist here are going to be in Greenland or Siberia right now. I, I don't have reason to believe they're anywhere else if they are. So hopefully we find one soon. Um, I probably should realistically check out that sort of central Russia kind of area because we haven't checked it out. And we've checked out Siberia fairly well and didn't find anything there. Uh, we've checked out Greenland pretty well, I would think, and still haven't found one there. So the only other area where aliens have sort of hung out outside of our sensor range has been in that kind of central Russia kind of area. So we'll probably check that out next part. Uh, but yeah, so that'll be it for this part. I'll see you all next time. Until then, goodbye and farewell.